Hello and welcome to the unit six of uh, physical geography. This one will be talking about shaping the land, what we do with this land of ours, or not we, but what nature is doing to the land as far as shaping it. <clears throat> what we will see in this unit, well, in general, we take for granted the fact that we see mountains, sea, valley, etc. But all those are shaped through time with different forces of nature. Although humans have done their fair share of changing landscape, um, there is nothing human can do that can come even near the scale of what nature has done and continue doing. To the landscape. So how has the Earth's surface been modified by weathering, erosion, and deposition? This is a question we'll be asking. How has the local landscape evolved? Yeah. What are the forces involved? Those are all questions we will try to answer in this unit. So let's start this one. So weathering and mass wasting. Weathering is the breaking down of the rocks, soil, and minerals, as well as wood and artificial material through contact with Earth's atmosphere, water, and biological organism. You might want to say, well, weathering is the same as erosion, but no, it's not. It's two different things. The weathering breaks down the solids, and erosion moves the solid. That's the main difference between the two. So the weathering is actually just a breaking down, but the erosion will move it. And just click on the link below in the description to have this video. This guy is explaining it. It's, it's very, very simply explained, but I think it's very efficient as far as explaining how that goes. So weathering in mass wasting. So mass wasting is the movement of soil usually down the slope. A common word for mass wasting is a landslide. And this short video again on the uh, description below is the link will be there is explaining it's an old video but explaining it very well and this is an image of what it may look like around so we see all this is going down and going down most likely in this river right you can see that one there <clears throat> the hydrologic cycle yes it is the water cycle but how it can shape the land and just click on that will tell you. But you see here an absolute evidence of water erosion, right? Right here. Same thing here when you have caves like this. You, this is water that's done its work in here. And it's well explained there. Groundwater and karst landscape. So now you see this, right? You see those. It's kind of, you go like, how this happened? Well, it's because of the type of rock you have there. So it's a karst landscape. So karst is a um, topography form from the dissolution of solid rocks, such as, as limestone, dolomite, and gypsum. It is characterized by underground drainage system with sinkholes and caves. And the link here, right, that will be in the description below, uh, the guy there, um, let's just say that um, <laughs> he's, he's explaining it very well, right, and, but sometimes it, his voice, anyway, to me, his voice was kind of uh, getting on my nerves. But he explained it so well, and the info that he's giving is 
so accurate that it's worth the few minutes of pain. <laughs> I'll say that. But anyway, to explain this, it's fairly simple. The ground here was up here many, many, many years ago. And the water went in. And wherever you had those type of rocks, limestone, dolomite, and gypsum, it actually dissolves in water with time, leaving the other type of rocks not as much touched. So the rest when, let's say, just imagine here, you can imagine here, right? It's, it's very, because of this. So you can imagine here, and then all of a sudden there was, there was just a tiny bit on the surface here, and then everything collapsed because the water uh, dissolved pretty much all the rocks that were possible to dissolve and not those. So that's pretty much what it is. I was told that this image was something probably in Vietnam. There's a lot of that over there. I don't know. I just looked at that one and just used that one, that image. Because I like it. It's beautiful. All right. Ice Age and um, the work of continental and alpine glaciers. An ice age is a geologic period characterized by the presence of polar ice sheet and alpine glaciers. Period of major glaciations coming commonly um, also referred to as ice age are scientifically termed glacial periods, right? So whenever I talk about ice age, it's just the common word for glacial periods. The earth was shaped by all four ice ages, but here in Canada, it left us with the most important resource that we can even imagine, fresh water. Yup, the Great Lakes of Canada are a gift from uh, the last ice age. It's a gift of the last ice age. If it wasn't for the fourth ice age that created the Rockies, Rocky Mountains, and the Great Lakes, Canada would look completely different. We would not have that much fresh water here if it wasn't for that. Now, glaciers are the last evidence of an ending of Ice Age. So when you have glaciers, it's because you have the end of an Ice Age. So we are right now at the end of an ice age, the Younger Dryas. And the melting of glaciers give us an understanding of how glaciers were, have changed our landscape because now we see the, um, we see the glaciers going away, melting away, and because we're at the end of an ice age. And because of that, we are able to see gradually, it does um, go very fast, and man can see, right? Mankind can see the actual events happening and what is left behind the glaciers. So that gives us a better idea when we see some evidence in different places. We go like, oh, okay, this is a mark that was left by glaciers. So this was at the end of an ice age that happened there. And the link here explains all of that, the <clears throat> glacial erosion and how it works. So it's, again, in the link in the description below. The link is there. Take the time to watch it. You'll need it. Coastal process and landform. Have you ever wondered why the natural coastline we know so well 
is not all straight and well-defined lines. Why do we have that? Why do we have things like this here, right? As with everything natural, it's always a combination of different forces and geology. And again, this video that you have in the link below will explain all of this. And um, that's, that's pretty much that. But in short, the water comes in and will start eroding, so moving the rocks in some areas and wherever it's easier for the water to erode, take the rock away, this will go. And whatever is harder to do for usually, well, there's different reason. It can be because it's an, at an angle that the water does not splash as hard, or it can be that the type of rock is different, right? So if you go and watch this, it explains the coastline of uh, UK, England. So it explains the coastline there and why some areas are different than others. But it applies to everything, even here. And arid landscape and aeolian, aeolian landscape. So those basically are dry areas and wind landscape. Arid landscape is a landscape that lacks water or moisture. It doesn't have a lot. Uh, usually due to low or lack of annual rainfall. So for some reason, that area is not, there's not a lot of rain. Or let's just say precipitation, because you can have um, a landscape that is a desert, but it's north because <clears throat> it's, it's going to be snow. But whatever, that's side the point. Arid light landscape are parched dry land that cannot ideally support plant. Deserts are arid landscapes. So when we talk about arid landscapes, we tend to see deserts as being hot and dry, right? So that's, that's true. But like I said before, the, you have the same frozen deserts, if you want, in, in the north. But let's just stick with the deserts because it's much, much easier to explain. And uh, actually, the desert biome wrap that you have here is actually, a, I, I find anyway, very funny. Uh, it's a guy that is rapping about the desert. And the biome of the desert. So different things that you see in the desert and all that. All right. So just have that, have fun, and uh, just watch this. It's just so funny. The uh, Aeolian processes is the wind activity in the study of geology and weather, and specifically to the wind's ability to shape the surface of the Earth or other planets, as a matter of fact, because there's wind on other planets too. All the water, water is a much more powerful eroding force than wind. Aeolian processes are important in arid environments such as desert. Because see here, in the desert here, you can imagine there's not a lot of mountain in this area, right? They're all around. This area is very dry. So you can imagine when there's wind, the sand will be lifted. Maybe not as much in this area because there's some shrubs and cactus and stuff like that. But maybe in this area a little bit more. You can see erosion in this area by wind. Aeolian, um, that would be very, very, um, well, you'd have that a lot more here than here, for example. 
Anyway, all this to say, um, the lady in explaining this in here, she's doing such a good job, very well explained. So just click on that link and that will be in the description below. And just go and do that and just watch it, listen to it, understand it. It's pretty good. No problem. And if you have any questions, of course, as usual, just ask. And I'll try to answer those questions. Now the questions here. So explain what is erosion, weathering and deposition. So give me what's the difference between those. How can the water cycle shape the landscape? Good details always in the, um, in the videos you have that. Explain the relationship between a karst region and groundwater. This is again the video. This guy, like I said, personally, the voice is not the best, but the guy is actually explaining it very well. Very good, uh, very good info. So that's good there. So explain how an ice age can shape the land. There's many possible answers here. If you watch the videos, you'll have plenty of ideas to explain that. So explain why a coastal landscape cannot be all in a straight line. There's many reasons, so, but you can narrow it down to about two. And what is the main erosion factor in a arid landscape? This is going to be easy because there's only one. Okie dokie. So, this is the end of Unit 6, Shaping the Land. That was another short one. Alrighty, so take care and uh, see you later.